Welcome, collectors, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Diecast Emporium. In today's video, we're going to do something that we've never done before on this channel. With the help of JCAR Diecast, we're going to be taking a look at the mix three of the power grabs for Matchbox. Now, these are different than conventional Matchbox cars that you guys are familiar with because conventional Matchbox cars come on what are known as cards. Just like this, you pop open the vehicle off of the card and you're ready to display it. The power grabs come in a box assortment like this. And if you have a Kroger, for example, I've even seen them at Meijer. A lot of times they come in assortments such as this with the different Matchbox cars and vehicles in a box style container. So it makes it a little bit easier to store your vehicle when you're done with it for safekeeping. You can't exactly put the vehicle back on the card nicely for storage. Obviously, once you open up a card, you are one and done. The other main difference between the power grabs and a regular basic case assortment is that the power grab, at least in this style, does not have all of the same vehicles that would be in your regular Mix 3 case assortment. So for example, in here you have the, the MG, the uh, Ford Mustang, the Civic, the Mini uh, Pumper, the Porsche convertible, the Speed Trapper, the Dodge Swipside pickup, the Mini Countryman, the International E-Star, the Nova, the Nissan Van, and of course the Hazard Squad. But what is noticeably absent are these three. You have the Roadstripe King, which is the line painting truck. The... 1965 Land Rover Gen 2, and to update what I mentioned on my basic case unboxing that you may have just finished watching before this video, there are indeed two variations of the cargo cover that are that's on top of the roof of this Land Rover, so this is variation 1, you can see there, and this is variation 2. You can see the different style cargo container that's on top. I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but on camera you can see that they are noticeably different, so make sure that you try and chase both variations of the 1965 Land Rover Gen 2 for 2021. Lastly, the other main difference is that you do not have the fire skid steer that we saw once again in the case assortment. It is not in the power grabs. So with that done, let's begin our unboxing and figure out what is in here because I don't know what the assortment is. Obviously, there are going to be some doubles. There are going to be some triples. So let's get started. So you have a 1976 Honda Civic in white. There are three of those, as you can see here. One, two, and three. Push these off to the side. There are three Ford F550 Mini pumpers, one, two, and three. So that's six. There's two of the Matchbox INC Speed Trappers, the construction vehicle. These are always really, really cool to put up in dioramas to control the flow of your Matchbox vehicles through a construction zone. By the way, make sure that you stay tuned all the way to the end of this video because I know that we unboxed a lot of them during my preview of the mix case, but now that we have all of them, just for you guys, I'm going to open up one of each of these that's in this uh, power grabs case and we'll take a closer look at it and give you my full thoughts on it so stay tuned to the end of this we'll take a look at it after the break so two speed trappers we have two nissan envy courtesy shuttle vans two international e-stars the electric delivery truck from 2009 looks like one Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. One 1971 MGB GT Coupe or Coupe in British Racing Green. What else? Two 79 Chevrolet Novas. So if you weren't able to find the Novas on the pegs, for example, because I know this has been very well received by adult collectors. There's two of them in the power grabs. Two orange 2011 Mini Countryman. What else we have? Getting towards the bottom now. Two, another one that has been met with 
critical acclaim. The 1957 Dodge Swepside pickup truck, two of those. Down to the last four. Two 2019 Ford Mustang Coupes, or Coupe, in Ford Blue. And the last two out of the Power Grabs case for Mix 3 is the Hazard Squad Hazmat or Rescue Truck, a Matchbox original casting. All right, at this juncture, let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to open one of each of these that's in this case. We'll take a look at the actual model up close, and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. All right, welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with me. So the first car that we'll take a closer look at out of the Power Grabs box, this is the 1976 Honda CVCC, also known as the Honda Civic. Last time we saw this, I, and I know I touched on this during the preview video, but last time we saw this was last year in a mustard yellow color. Personally, my opinion, I think it looks better in this white color for this year and what i really think would be super cool is if matchbox kind of follows what hot wheels does with the then and now series or sub series that they do and uh, release a newer honda civic in white and have this one next to it so you can kind of have you know the evolution of where the civic was and where it is today but for this casting i think one of the biggest complaints that people have about it at least in the adult line or the adult collector's perspective is this big huge rivet in the back window that you can see right here Again, you have to have that once you're dealing with dollar cars and dollar castings just to hold everything together, but it really does detract from the overall look of the model. On the back, you have your license plate here, which reads Honda. Honda right here, your CVCC, your tail lights, your turn indicators, a plastic bumper. I even like the fact that they highlighted with some silver paint uh, really the outside or the, the margin errors for where the uh, rear license plate cover would go that's a nice small subtle touch that you really wouldn't see the interior has some casting detail all in black there's some casted in detail to the mold here and here and here obviously on the front you have the honda logo and two forward facing lights i think it also was a good touch to go with these style wheels it brings the model to scale and gives it an overall appropriate looking profile to it there's also a small single exhaust stack at the back you guys let me know what you think of this car. I think certainly it is a highlight in this series and for this mix. Good news for, as you saw when we did the unboxing for the Power Grabs, there are three of them in here. So again, you should have no problem finding one. Or if you buy your case from jcardiecast.com, that allows you to open one, keep one case, keep one in the box, and perhaps open another one to do your own custom paint job on it. Always helps when you have three of the same model. All right. What was the second one we opened? Oh yeah, it was the Ford F550 Super Duty, the mini pumper as I like to call it. These trucks are always very popular in the real world among fire departments because they often serve dual purposes as a, both as obviously a pump rig, but also as a fast response or a quick response rig that would often get to a call faster than your larger traditional fire apparatus does. This casting is one of my personal favorites. The front part of the truck, the cab portion is die cast. The back portion, which I would call the, the mini pumper unit, you can see the small pump back here, is plastic, but it has some great detail on it. You have some hose reels back here, your mini pump, your different toolboxes and cupboards back here, which again, with some help of some paint and a little bit of patience, you can really bring the details out in this casting and make it look like a very high quality model. Same style wheels on this truck that we saw on the Civic. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, again, many of the adult collectors will be familiar with this, but maybe some of the new collectors just in our hobby may not be, but Matchbox had the Premier Series. This is a truck that would be a great candidate for that, to have some realistic-looking wheels on the front and different realistic-looking wheels on the rear. Uh, maybe, again, bring the mirrors out to have your trailer-style mirrors that would be appropriate for this style truck. This would be an excellent candidate if Matchbox would ever bring back that type of Premier Series. Um, and I actually do believe that back in the day, they sold a mini pumper in a KME style, a Ford mini pumper. It's very difficult to get. I was never able to get one in my collection. It's on my hit list to get. Um, but at any rate, this casting is very good. Once again, it's another highlight of the series. Normally, these trucks will have a licensed fire department livery on it. This one does not. It just reads Rescue 71, and I believe it reads... 
yeah, Matchbox Fire Rescue on the door. So not a licensed fire department on this one, which unfortunately is a bit of a shame. Next model, we have the Nissan Courtesy Shovel. Genuine service, the Nissan van. This has a trailer hitch on the back. We're going to kind of pick up the tempo of this video. Otherwise, it'll probably be about 35 minutes long. We don't want that. This is not one of my favorites just because I don't like this red interior. It's very unrealistic looking. I like the idea behind this having a courtesy shovel. So if you do have a collection of Nissan vehicles, perhaps you have a diorama of a Nissan car dealership, you can have this shuttling around at your uh, customers as they're having some maintenance done on their Nissan cars. The overall tooling, I think it's used a lot. Um, so this was you know, a nice take on it for the shuttle livery. There are two of them in this case, so you should have no problem getting one. All right, next up, let's take a look at the Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. This has been around since the late 90s. This one is phenomenal. I like the interior detail. I like the fact that it has Carrera back here. The tail lights look really good. There's even a red light up here on the top. Wheel choice was acceptable because it looks... It mimics the look of the real hubs on this Porsche really well. You have the Porsche badge on the front. Your lights look phenomenal. So for a dollar casting, this is, once again, not to beat a dead horse, but this is a favorite of mine from this mix. You know, I, I know the cliche is a bit dated now, but change my mind. I think this is probably the best mix of 2021, at least to this point, for Matchbox Basic range. And uh, it's a shame that there's only one of these in the case, but it is without question a highlight for sure. Despite it being a European car, it is sold here in North America, so it's nice to see that it is left-hand drive. All right, let's stick with some stuff from Europe. We have the Mini Cooper, 2011 Countryman in orange. Not a big favorite of mine. I think it gets overused again, and I don't. I, I think the profile of this car, although for, you know, for Mini standards, it is a four-door instead of your you know traditional two-door hatchback, but it's just a little bit too big for 164 scale. Uh, it just doesn't look right. But for fans of Mini Coopers and Minis, at least you do have an example of the 2011 uh, Countryman, one of the larger Minis in that range. Nice tampo detailing, the Mini badge on the back, headlights on the front, of course, some grill detailing, and the Mini badge on the front. It's hard to see any sort of window detailing, such as the windshields, because the top is all black and it's kind of casted in. Uh, here's where your antenna would be, but there even is a windshield wiper at the rear of the window. Okay, let's move on. We have the 1971 MGB GT Coupe. Another British car. This one is a little bit more eloquent, in my opinion. Love the yellow license plate. Obviously, all the mini decos on the back classic style hubs look excellent and when you can incorporate the base into the front bumper and the rear bumper that's always a win-win with me decos for the headlights also look good and the fact that the window is left down on both the driver and the passenger side again nice touch on this this goes very well with your other minis that may be in your collection or obviously some of your other classic british cars let's stick with the car theme but we'll cross the big ocean, head back to Detroit for the 2019 Ford Mustang Coupe or Coupe. Another fantastic casting in this range. I love the three-piece headlights that are synonymous with this era of Mustang. GT in the back, the Mustang horse for the license plate cover. Again, windows are down on this. Not only do you have the headlights, but you also have the turn indicators that are decoed on here. Just a solidly done representation of the Mustang this is a favorite of mine. Great to see it in blue. Great to see a hard top version of it. We saw the convertible before. Uh, again, great addition to your collection. And once again, there are two of these as well in the power grabs. All right, so that leaves us with the Chevy. 1979 Chevy Nova. For fans of classic American muscle, what else can you say about this car? It even has the two white so-called racing stripes, but strangely enough, they don't go across the whole body. It's just on the hood. Not sure if this was ever a factory paint job. I'd be honest with you. I really, in my opinion, could care less about classic Chevys. They're not my thing. 
Uh, I know that won't be a super popular opinion, but you know, for some people, they go crazy with these. I know in the collector community, I've seen a lot of people actually take these and make them into low riders and actually have, there, there's one guy, I wish I could remember his name, so I'd like to give him credit, but he actually somehow made this with working hydraulics to give it, you know, that low rider uh, and, uh, you know, some functionality to it as well. So kind of cool. There are two of these as well in the case, so you should have no problem finding one of these. Again, especially if you order it from jcardiecast.com. So that leaves us with a few trucks to close out the video. We'll start with the Dodge 1957 Dodge swept side. I always think that this is a algamatum or, or a combination of several classic 50s cars that just were scrunched together to create this truck. To me, looks like the back end of a 1957 Bel Air. Maybe the front end of uh, maybe... Depending on the way you look at it or the way the light refracts off of it, maybe some old Ford front end mixed in with some old Chevy front ends, Chevy style doors. But at any rate, it is a Dodge, and uh, I, I love this truck. I love the cream, the two tone red, the wheel choice is spot on. You even have the running boards on the side. The only way that this could have been any better at all was perhaps highlighting the headlights with some silver. Uh, paint or decos, which obviously you could do very easily if you have some paint pads, and maybe bringing out the Dodge logo that's embossed in the tailgate. The back of the truck has the fender wells for the rear tires, obviously as part of the bed of the truck, and even the two windshield wipers were casted in as part of the mold, and this has that realistic blue uh, window insert, which I think all cars should have instead of that you know, funky red that you see in that Nissan van, for example. All right. I believe that leaves us with just the E-Star and the Hazmat Squad. So let's do the Hazmat Squad first. So this is the, specifically, it's called the Hazard Squad or the Hazmat Squad because this is a Hazmat truck. It even reads Matchbox Hazmat Team, uh, A58 unit uh, on the side. Really love the fact that this has a Matchbox all-out theme. It has the Matchbox colors to it with the right, white and then the yellow, orange, and red repeating stripes all throughout. Now, those of us of a certain age, not going to try and date myself too much here, but this really gives us a classic Toyota racing look to it. Toyota had very much the same style colors uh, and theme to it, especially on the rally and off-road trucks that this does. Not sure if that had anything to do with it or if it was just a straight-on uh, matchbox take on a hazmat or rescue truck. At any rate, it's very good looking. The top of it even has an air conditioning unit casted in on top of the cab, as you can see here. The rear of the truck has an access ladder and even some lights that would be set up on a fire scene. This casting used to be all metal. Of course, now, as is the case with most matchbox things, it's mostly all plastic. But still in all, it's great to see it as a fan of trucks. Um, always good to see when one of these comes out. So we'll end the video with what most people probably wouldn't consider their favorite, but I'm going to disagree. This is the International E-Star Electric Van. To me, this is why I like this truck so much, and there are a couple different reasons. One, it's something completely modern and different, and two, as someone who pays attention to scale and really appreciates scale, uh, obviously 150th is my favorite scale to collect, and then 187 scale or HO scale is very close um, behind that. This scales out almost exactly to 187 scale. So if you have a model railroad and you want a fleet of these, you can do that very inexpensively. And FedEx, among other delivery companies, has a large fleet of these international trucks. These are very easy to disassemble. You can see two small rivet holes. And I've act I have actually already started doing that. I'm in the process of disassembling one. And I'm going to paint a few of them in the FedEx uh, FedEx home delivery and also FedEx ground colors. If you go on the internet, you will see that uh, FedEx has numerous pictures of these trucks. And they're very prominent in large cities. And actually, even in Cincinnati, you'll see them around, which is the city that I most closely live to, uh, live around. And this is just one of those unique and oddballs that just looks right at home on a railroad. So that's why I'm a huge fan of this casting. It's something that I can use as quote unquote a model that you could take from a dollar, uh, again, throwing out the taboo term, toy. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy with this. But as for those that just want to take it at face value, it says Matchbox DCM, Worlds in Miniature, 
uh, the this energy efficient transport provided by the MBX ambassadors around the world. Once again, another vehicle that has unit A58. I believe that has something to do with one of the Matchbox designers. The number 58, I think, is synonymous with, I could be wrong, but I think that's Michael Geralda. Something to do with, you know, that that number has significance to him and the castings that he designed. If I am incorrect on that, somebody please correct me, but I believe that's why a lot of these vehicles have 58 on them. Um, we saw it on the Hazard Squad as well. You can see A58 on the back right here, and this is another one that has it. So I think that's the significance of that. So, just to recap, this case does not have the skid steer loader that we saw uh, in the basics or either of the Land Rovers or another one of my personal favorites, the Road Stripe King, which has also been a smash hit with the younger collectors due to the fact that you can place a crayon in the back and literally traverse or draw a yellow Road Stripe on a piece of paper, of course, which bears repeating, not on your parents' walls. As always... I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know down in the comment section below which of all of these vehicles, cars, trucks, etc. that you have seen in this video is your favorite. And if you would like to purchase this power grab case, there will be a link in the video's description where you can go straight to jcardiecast.com and purchase it for yourself. Until next time, take care and be safe. I'll catch you in the next review.